Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Robin and this afternoon I did one of the jobs that I had been planning on doing for a while and that was cleaning out the wood stove or the fireplace just to get all of the ash and the charcoal out of there just because it was starting to build up a bit and it was time to empty it. And I thought I may as well film a video on what I actually do with the waste from the fireplace and how I use it on the garden. So I have done a video in the past on how I use wood ash in the garden. And that video was kind of based on how to use the white stuff that comes from the fireplace or the ash, um, which is mainly called potash. That's the really fine, um, lighter color that comes from when you burn wood. And in that video, I share some different ways that I use it on the garden um, and the different benefits that it has. It's really, really high in potassium really great for plants that are flowering and then and then setting fruit um, like tomatoes and your other flowers throughout the garden but there's so many other benefits to using potash so I'll definitely link that video down below if you wanted to check that out today I'm going to be sharing what I do with the other component um, that you kind of get as a byproduct from burning wood and that is the charcoal so charcoal in itself is basically just kind of pure carbon it's the material that wasn't oxidized enough to uh, form the ash and it's the larger black chunks that remain in the fireplace this in itself doesn't really have too many uh, nutrient properties it has carbon which plants do need um, but it but it essentially acts as a sink for other nutrients say if i was to put this pure charcoal out onto the garden it would technically absorb nutrients that's already around it and in the soil which is not what we want because we want the plants to be getting that so today i'm going to be sharing how to change this into something called biochar which is the more stable kind of carbon rich form of charcoal that can be used as a fertilizer so the black stuff is technically the base for our fertilizer that we're going to be making. I know a lot of people here on YouTube do make biochar. There's so many different ways to make it, but I'm gonna be sharing with you just the most simple form that you can do, um, just from the waste from your fireplace. Making biochar on a larger scale usually requires specific methods. You can dig an oval shaped pit and start a fire in it, and there's multiple different methods that you need to do to kind of stamp down the oxygen and take the oxygen out of that mix to make mainly charcoal. But in a fireplace, because there is oxygen in that mix you do get a lot of ash and then with all of the charcoal that's remained uh, this is what we want to charge with nutrients which is what I'm going to show you how to do today So the first thing you'll need to do is obviously grab everything out of your fireplace. So this is going to include um, the ash and all of the bits of charcoal as well. And then we're going to be putting it through multiple different stages of sifting this material to separate that ash from the charcoal. It's up to you, but usually I do like to wear a mask for this just to not ingest any of the ash that may come out. So this is the sifting method that I like to use. I like to put it through two different uh, sizes of sieves just to make sure that I'm really separating all of that ash or potash from the charcoal. So once I've got all of that charcoal, I'll just put it into a bucket and continue just sifting the entire mixture straight from the fireplace. And then I'm going to be putting it through another separate one. I have a garden sieve. I just, I don't use the same one in the kitchen. Um, this one stays in the garden for all of these kinds of jobs. And you can see here that there is still quite a little bit of charcoal in that mixture. So this is why I like to do a second sieve of it. And then what I'm gonna do is crush it up uh, so I'm getting a lot finer pieces and this just means that there's a lot more surface area to the mixture so that in the next step which I'm showing here it will absorb the nutrients a lot more. I'm putting this into just an old bin that we had and I'm filling it up with worm tea straight from my worm farm. 
So this is all of the liquid that has gone through the worm farm and is just really high in nitrogen and of a lot of other different minerals that are in worm castings. A pretty neutral pH as well. And I'm just putting that straight into where the charcoal is and giving it a mix up, making sure that none of the charcoal is left on the surface. And I let this sit in this bin for about four weeks or so before I use it on the garden to make sure that the biochar has absorbed as much nutrients as it can. There are just so many different uses for biochar. It's great for improving your garden soil and you're also capturing carbon from the atmosphere as well. Because this mixture repels oxygen, it's actually not reacting to create carbon dioxide. And the carbon within the biochar that you lay on your garden is going to stay in the soil for years and years. The way I like to use it, you can see here I'm just uh, spreading out the pot ash. This is how I like to use biochar as well, where I will just spread it out onto the garden or in the compost. Um, and I'll make sure that I do cover it with mulch if I'm putting the biochar onto the garden. And for years and years, that will slowly release the nutrients that you've captured within the biochar and provide food for your plants. So that is the really simple and easy way that I like to make biochar. Let me know if you make biochar at home and what your methods are. I would love to try some other methods, but this is just the most easy and simplest method. I don't have to make any kind of structures or dig a massive hole in the backyard. Um, I can just use exactly what I get from the fireplace because we have fires at night to heat the place and I always want to be making the most of everything and not letting anything go to waste as well. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for lots more garden content and give the video a thumbs up as well. Thank you so much for watching and until my next video, happy gardening everyone. Bye.